So let's get all back in some more goddamn questions. First in line, we got two paid questions, my favorite. First one's a quickie. Uh, it's kind of, it's not gym related. It's kind of like more hormone related. Guy I paid for it so he gets answered. It should be pretty quick though. And I actually, dumb, dumb, you might just, even you know, I want to hear about how much he likes mortician again. You might actually want to hear this because uh, you can benefit from it. This is uh, gold information. Literally the people in this kind of world pay hundreds and thousands of dollars for it. Not even exaggerating. No fucking coaches that charge five grand for three months for this type of info. So you might want to listen up, dumb, dumb, because it might benefit you. Uh, so there's that one. It'll be pretty quick. And then the, uh, the next one's a fuck it. Woo! That guy sent over 30 large. I literally didn't even read it yet, so I didn't know what to ask. I guess see a few question marks. Maybe he sent a multiple qu uh, questions in there. Nonetheless, that might take up the rest of the goddamn video. So I'll try to go through it fast because it's a longie. But hey, he paid, goddamn it, so it gets automatic right off. Uh, this one, well, the first one though, asking anonymously. Hey, J Dog, curious to know your opinion on the following health related matters. Firstly, wondering if DHA slash pregnenolone could be an effective supplementation to positively modulate the male hormone profile. I mean, again, if you're trying to raise testosterone and if you're deficient in DHAA, then it could be. Personally, the only person that I've ever heard of that had a low DHAA, uh, and it was, I don't know if he even know if it was a problem. I think he just fucking dealt with it because uh, his doctor told him to, was uh, pro bodybuilder Johnny Jackson. He told me that in person. Uh, it was actually outside his last Olympia that he competed. And I was, you know, chat with him. He retired. I think he was like 50, 51 years old. One of the older guys to do it. I remember specifically asking him if you've ever had, if he has any health problems, anything like that, kidneys, liver, heart. He's like, nothing. Like zero, no problems whatsoever. So the only thing is he mentioned the DHAA. And then he's like, my doctor just had me supplement with that. He's like, that was it. He's like, oh, no. He's like, I literally have nothing. I was like, so I got pretty lucky in that department. Outside that, the only benefit I see used for it is with females. Um, real men just take straight tests, brah, brah, if you're worried about your test. So just get a, get a blood lab. If you're at the normal levels of DHEA, it's kind of like why you're, you're worried about it. It's the only reason to be concerned is if your other, the, the big boy hormones aren't feedback looping off of it. And if it's, if it's everything's in the norm, no reason to give a shit. Uh, the only, the way you're almost kind of, uh, bring it up is that you want higher test levels in the end. Um, just take straight tests, man. I mean, all, all these, if, if you want fucking funny. It's kind of like somebody that's like, dude, I need a fucking gallon of water and I'm just going to like fucking, I don't know, rained out there. So I'm going to shake my leaves into a jug and like squeeze the leaves and get out. Just, just go straight to the source. Just get fucking water, man. But <laughs> people like want to raise my testosterone, want to raise my testosterone. Just take fucking test. What are you worried about then? Well, isn't it bad for you? Okay. So you watch, let me ask you this. Like the, 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 hear how stupid you sound. You want your levels higher but now you're saying it's bad for you. How does that make any sense whatsoever? Well, J-Dog, there's this, this, and that. No, there is no this, this, and that. There's, here's, the, here's the only there is. If you are a young buck and you are considering having children, then there's a possibility it can fuck with your fertility, which is super reversible, too. The There's other drugs and shit you have to take, so it might be a bit of an inconvenience, and it might be a bit, little bit more of a uh, you know, cost. There's that. If you are dead set, you already had all the kids you want, or you kind of have no kids, you're dead set, you don't want to have kids, then just take the synthetic test. That is the only downfall. Well, j Dog, I read this, this, and that's heart disease, and it fucks with your cholesterol, and it does this. Yeah, you're talking about super physiological fucking dosages that the human body can't produce. You know what bodybuilders take and other fucking athletes, make no mistake about the fat ball players too, take. Make no mistake about it. They do. And when you get in those dosages, that's when you start to run that. Not replacement dosages. Not even a mildly high replacement dosage. So just if you just want to be kick-ass and you're not going to have any problems, just do 200 milligrams a week. The only thing you might have is you might have, if you're super sensitive to estrogen or DHT, you might have to mitigate those with two other fucking drugs. The lower those. That's if you're sensitive to and they're high. And you know, the only way you're going to know is through blood test. If you want to be super half-assed about it, just go to about, about 120 to 150 milligrams, split up at two, two doses per week, and that should put you at the high end of normal of what a natural body can produce. Your test will always be there. You don't even have to worry about estrogen. You're good to go. There's nothing to worry about. And all these, the only people that you're going to, now you're going to, you can YouTube this and find all the people that say, talk about how dangerous it is. 
Yeah, bodybuilders get a good laugh out of that because <laughs> the amounts they're taking shit, they'd be dead in two weeks if it was if, there, if there was replacement coaches were dangerous. Is um, what the fuck was I saying about uh, those, those side effects or what was I saying? Yeah, goddamn, lost my goddamn train of fucking thought talking about it. No, that's, you got fucking have to worry about it. Oh, oh yeah, the people that you find on, on YouTube talk about the, the other ways is holistic hippies that are selling junk ass fucking testosterone boosters that do fuck all fucking nothing and are more expensive than actual use an actual straight test. Considerably more expensive. But they're safer. No, they're not. You're raising your test. If if they worked, same goddamn thing, same goddamn concept. They're junk. Just don't waste your goddamn time for it. Secondly, I'm curious to know what a minimum effective duration of a growth hormone cycle would be. Uh, you don't cycle growth hormone. Only W cycle. Dummies and broke-ass bastards cycle growth hormone. You take it and you take it for the rest of your goddamn life if you're using it for health benefits. And whether or not discontinuation can have del- del- deleterious effects years down the road. No, 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 no. Primarily interested for health, longevity purposes, though I do lift. Yeah, so you do it for health purposes. Uh, um, General rule of thumb, two, two IUs for a female before bed, male, uh, two IUs, um, I mean, three IUs pre-bed. Zero side effects, none. You're totally fucking fine. You take it for the rest of your life. The only reason this cycling growth hormone came into play and it still exists is because you're getting misconstrued of what go- the goal is. When you hear cycling, for example, with pro bodybuilders, first of all, stars, the top pros don't ever stop taking growth hormone. What they do is they cycle their dosages. What they, the, the ones they don't tell you about, the only one, there's a couple that are honest about it, there's, but there's very few, like like Ian Valier or somebody's never going to tell you this. But this is what they do. They go up between 18 to 36 IUs, either a, either a, an entire serostim bottle or an entire genotropin pen. They do take the entire thing in one day, which is fucking insane and extremely fucking expensive. But you cycle that two to three months on, two to three months off. The off time they're taking about four or five years. I use. That's where the cycling is, but they never stop taking it. For health purposes, when you're talking about people like Sylvester Stallone, Brad Pitt, Jennifer Aniston, yes, make no mistake, they all take growth hormone. Uh, if they say they don't, they're full of fucking shit. Uh, well, Stallone makes no bones about it when he got caught in Australia. Uh, I think part of the reason he looks like as good as he does still, it's in his 70 years old. <laughs> two to three I use. Two for a male. Three for a female, take it before bed. It's going to help increase your sleep, too. Uh, don't take it first thing in the morning. Why well, I heard take it in the morning. Yeah, another bodybuilding protocol, not what you're concerned about. It's completely fucking annoying that. Before bed, bra That's when your body naturally wants to produce that hormone. That's what's going to be most bioidentical, and it's going to help uh, increase your sleep, too. But, yeah, dude, I mean, if you're looking to just optimize shit, 200 megs of test a fucking week, three I use a fucking GH day. If you need to uh, be pointing out how to do that, no, J-Dog doesn't sell this shit, nothing like that. But if you can point in the right direction so you don't waste hundreds of thousands of dollars going about finding fake shit, I'll even read your blood work on it. If you're fucking uh, losing sleep at night because you're worried about taking fresh Flintstone vitamins, basically, um, dog's 100 bucks a month. So you'll have, you'll know where to get it, how to do it, and uh, I'll read your goddamn blood work after administration of whatever you start eight weeks in since you're so goddamn scared. But, um, yeah, the dog charges 100 bones for that, which is jack shit. Said the Bible of the world, thousands these top coaches charge for that kind of shit. Next goddamn one. Like I said, this might take the whole fucking video, so I'm going to try to go, go through it quickly. I don't even have no idea what the fuck it's about. Saw it. I'm not reading all that. I don't got time for this. I'm doing it on camera. Uh, Andrew Wimmers, Justin. Greetings. Long time fan of the show, but banned from YouTube over BS. Yep, it's a goddamn cancel culture, anti freedom of speeches, the motherfuckers, which is a few of you I'm sure watching. You support cancel culture, the dog does not support you. You're a fucking piece of shit. Because that's the you, your anti-freedom of speech. In case any devil hasn't answered yet. Hemorrhage did play the states three times. Yes, I'm aware. Twice at MDF. Yep, yep, yep. And once 2014 in Philly. Gutter Christ Fest. Was all three got... Was that all three? Oh, you were at all three. Yeah, they got two uh, MDF I almost went to. Um, but just one reason or another didn't make it. Christian did tour states 98, 99 with Incantation Angel Corpse. Where to, goddammit? Why Hells didn't release? Oh, uh, there too, goddammit. Okay. Um, why Hells didn't release Unmerciful Order? Wanted to. I wanted Hells to do, especially a 12 inch picture disc of it. And uh, yeah, uh, NLP, the band didn't want to. They think it sounds like shit. So uh, I specifically wanted to, though. Seance for 
Four and over, laid to rest, is the answer to what Swedish albums the dog left out of what bands sounds like Theocide. Uh, I I know I've had it for the seance at one point. Uh, don't own it. Don't recall it. Does it sound? Does it actually sound like Theocide though? Um, maybe I'll have to go listen, forever listen to it. Go back and listen to it. Sounds of Death Mag did did get give a well deserved zero skulls to Belial. Dash three, but the editor stated he preferred to review what he likes, so there will be very little bad reviews. Did SOD ever give a bad review? There was that was an old question. Uh, for me, I never seen one, but I never read by. But I mean, I wasn't, I was never a big zine guy at all. And SOD, I was never big on when I saw it. The big reason was because I was just like, oh, this guy literally likes everything. I was like, so why would I take his critiquing whatsoever? Just, all you gotta do is see he reviewed it. Don't even read it. Oh, it's probably it's at least pretty good or worth worth checking out. Because I've never seen him say this fucking sucks. Again, I'm not saying it's never happened. Just I've, the couple of issues I've seen is like everything's eight, nine, ten skulls and a lot of six, six, sixes. Six, six, six. That means the ultimate of the ultimate. There ain't many of those, goddamn it, by my book. Uh, the band Crypto Kerberos changed their style. I remember that band being boring as fucking pissed, personally. But uh, but the first seven inch Visions Beyond Darkness sounds similar to Mortician, and I always thought. That that EP was a big influence to Mortician, question mark. Be a great round two interview question. Killer first one. Uh, yeah, if we'll be up to it, I doubt he'd want to do a round two. He wasn't ecstatic about round one. But if he wants to, I'd be up for it. But we'll see. Uh, I was going to put my two cents on Cam Lee, but that's that's a damn essay. Already got a damn essay. <laughs> Since you said uh, you didn't like reviews, fuck it. Didn't even, don't even review it. Don't even review what? Just give it a shout out in Devil's... Into raw blasting gore grind, we'll check it out. I play drums, a bud bass and vocals, and hopefully everyone else can get a laugh. If you, if you got two thousand people tuning in, we'll be doing good. If ten devils like it, yeah, that's a lot of times the way it goes. One dollar, one dollar for potential devil. Yep, could do worse. Band name is Small Dick Humiliation <laughs> and Die Hard Devil Such. Uh, Die Hard, Die Hard Devil Search. S X D X H X Bandcamp. To catch all that devils. I'm um, a small dick humiliation. You know what? I'm gonna metal archive this right now and fucking see what the fuck this is all about. And yeah, as far as I mean, dude, I, I if you wanted me to review your shit, I mean you, you goddamn paid. I, I'll I'll review it. I mean well dude, you don't really like doing it. Who gives a fuck what I like doing? I didn't feel like brushing my teeth this morning, but I did too. If you're paying that then, then fuck yeah, I'll do it. I don't see it on Bang. I don't see it on Metal Archives, bro, bro. That's already a red flag as far as not a good idea unless I spelled it wrong. Spell it the way you did. H U M I L I Ation. <clears throat> not looking good, bro, bro. I'm already uh I got my fucking dick in my hand and I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know where you're from, don't know what you're about, don't know how many release you have. That's what people's first go to is so. My recommendation to you is get that shit up on fucking Metal Archives, goddammit. Very important. Uh, in my opinion, death and black metal bands wearing a plain black shirt in band photos or on stage is as does not fit fit the bill as flat flat hats and sports jerseys. Eh. Uh, I mean, I kind of see where you're coming from, but I mean, like, for example, like someone like Immolation, they just wear the all black clothes. I think it fits for them because they're kind of supposed to be like, you know, they're kind of like, just let's have a very dark theme, and we're not there to fucking be a goddamn billboard. You know what I mean? Um, so I get that. So I don't know. I can see maybe your argument not liking it, but to say it's as bad as sports jerseys, I would have to disagree with that. Sports jerseys, is that, that, that's, sports jerseys, you're going to a ball game. You, you can get off the court, bro. Like, you're not, you're not shooting hoops with your buddy. Like, that's, that's what, it just, that shouldn't even need to be explained. Uh, 90% of the time that it screams out, wannabe rock star, professional paddler of a douche canoe. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, to a degree, I mean, I think there is some of that. That's the reason that it's, it's guys, uh, again, guys in bands that are not fans at all, which is a lot of them. And I am, da and I am damn sure ain't into no underground shit. That was speaking about those guys. Yep. Those motherfuckers ain't got no infernal hierarchy seven inch. Gorman upset Seskis, Shubnigaroth, Unknown Ador, or Blasphemies of the of Blasphemies of the Netherworld. Impre 
the the word blasphemies of, of the netherworld, imprecation, ceremony of the nine angels, eternal torment, summonish, etc. They ain't in the underground death metal. No, they're probably not. At the end of the day, I don't give a damn. Damn, and bands could do whatever they want, but I'll put it like this. If I go to a show and my wallet's vag is wet <laughs> and horny to spend money on band merch, then seeing plain black shirts dry it out quick. <laughs> yeah. If you agree, to add it to the list of canoe call-outs. I'm in the middle. I can see where you're coming from. I, I think it depends on context. I, I guess if it's a band like... Um, Mm, yeah, maybe someone like this say that's a diabolic somewhere in it. If they were just to go in there in blue jeans and a black shirt, it just screams at the very least, I don't give a fuck. It, de it definitely screams that 100%. Like, you just would you just get off work, man? Like, I, I, yeah, you're here to play a show. Why do I want to buy a $15, $20 ticket to watch you stand there like you're at your fucking rehearsal practicing for the show? This was supposed to be a show. That's 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 my that's my argument. It just screams you don't. It just screams you don't give a fuck. It's just phone it in. Let's get this shit over with, bro. That's that's what that says to me. By the way, Dob off didn't pull that crap. So don't before fucking bubbles comes over here yet again. He said fucking Dob, but we're not. I've never seen a guy about him. I saw it as when he opened up the bottom of the angel. You know what I said? She's an example, dumb dumb. So wearing the shirt. Uh, not trying to call anyone out in particular. Uh, sucks, especially to see immolation. Oh, <laughs> like I said, for them, I think it kind of fits, though. They used to wear incantation, mortician, etc. shirts. Hopefully there's a better reason than bands give me free shirts and then cry like bitches when we don't wear them. I doubt anyone... You know what? I could kind of see that being the case. I can totally see that being the case. For starters, with immolation, I feel like that they just finally got their own niche as far as what they want to do uh, for an image on stage to feel kind of like, you know, world of darkness type of thing. Um, and it, like I said, for them, it fits. Uh, would it be my outfit? Not necessarily, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's ridiculous. And I think it fits for them. And I can totally see that dude, because people give me free shit all the time. And I can totally see, especially being a band on a stage, bands are giving them shit, their, them, their shirts hand over fist and their buddies bands or yeah, we opened up and now you know, it was us cannibal corpse and some bullshit death core band open up for them. And um, the, the, say the Deathcore guy gives him a shirt, and Ross is just like, you know, dude, I like you as a person, but I don't like this shit. Watch my Ross Dolan interview. No, knows about Doctor Shrinker, Nihilus demos, real shit. Totally into it still. He's bringing up. I don't remember off camera though. He's bringing up uh, newer bands that he thought were good, like un underground bands, Tetragamoside, or how the fuck you pronounce that. I think he brought up Witch Wrist or uh, Witch Vomit. He brought brought up a few others, and I was kind of shocked to even know who that is, but he did. So he's in his stuff, but maybe that might be his reason, because I could see that, dude. And again, what's he going to do? Tell the fucking uh, death core canoe, ah, dude, I don't want to wear this. And the guy's offended. Now the guy's, guy's going to be a fucking pussy, because everybody is. So now he's talking shit about your band, trying to get you canceled, and all this other dumb shit, just because he didn't want to wear your shirt. Because I get shirts and stuff all the time, just like, yeah, you know, thanks. But in all honesty, unless I like the album, like the band, I I'm probably just going to give the damn thing away. I don't wear shirts of shit I don't like. That's poser shit. If I'm wearing a shirt, it's not because, oh, my buddy gave it to me. What do they sound like? I don't know. To me, that's poser shit. I wear, I will only wear a goddamn shirt if I know the album, like it's, honestly, you kind of have to own something by them, too. If you don't, that's that's kind of canoe as well. Kind of make the argument nowadays, not as much, because you can do digital downloads and shit. I do get it to an extent. However, I'm telling you right now, just like being at fucking Tish the other night, no Will Rounder, too, which was, that was a goddamn flop cop for me. Uh, understood why those goddamn uh, his, uh, flight canceled, so it's not like he can control the goddamn weather. But dude, I, I, I was sitting there talking to Don of the Dead, and my buddy Brian Woody and shit came down, and I'm just like, dude, I'm telling you, I, I was like, it just got vaguely brought up. I'm like, look at these idiots. I was like, 85% of these people I've never seen before. I'm at every fucking show. Why have I never seen you before? You're wearing a tish shirt. That means you like, dude, again, going back to 99 to 2000, if you had a mortician shirt on, you liked heavy shit. That means, that, dude, if back then, if you had a mortician shirt on, right, and you were at the mortician show, which the only reason he had a mortician shirt on is because he bought it at that fucking show. When I say he, it's not just one guy. It was multiple. I saw him. Never seen you before. You best believe, dude, 
99 times out of 100 back then, dude, if they were, because like I said, Tish was, you listen to underground fucking shit. You listen to heavy shit. Let's say Regurgitation, the local band in Cleveland, Ohio, let's say they played the very next month. That same person would be at that show. What show's coming up next for the dog? Um, I know Mulder's in like a month. Let's say Mulder. Well, and it's on a Saturday, so don't pull that weeknight crap. I was busy. It's on a Saturday. The Tish was on a Saturday. Both days you're clearly off work or have time for. And it's the venue that's in walking distance. So basically same venue, right? Guarantee you I won't see any of those motherfuckers, dude. Guarantee you I won't. Why, why aren't you at Mulder? You don't like death metal? Wait, wait, what are we talking about, bro? So one of the top fucking death metal bands that come out in the last seven years or when the fuck they first started? Why aren't you there? It's because they're not into this shit, man. I go to these shows with the bigger crowds. Again, I'm Tish is just now in the category with the Cannibal Corpses, Deicides. Not saying they're that big. But what I'm saying is you go there and there's a, there's a full house. I always said this since I was a teenager. I remember when I saw Cannibal, I said it to fucking even Lou Manicore. I remember it was, I think it was Cannibal at the Agora. Almost positive it was Cannibal. Either or, but, or a bigger band. It could have been Cradle of Filth, but I think it was Cannibal. It was outside the Agora parking lot. It was full everywhere. And even Lou was saying, because I think it was... Uh, there was a show the week before, I think it was like Manicore, Regurgitation, and like maybe one on a local metal band, right? We were there. And he was just saying, yeah, look, look at all these fucking people. Where were they last week? Exactly. Where were they last week? It's a bunch of fucking posers, man. I'm just telling you. It's a bunch of fucking posers. Now I'm telling you, I understand that not everybody can fucking make it. Things pop up. But dude, you go to Cannibal, there's 500 people. Back then there was at the Agora about 500 people. The week before, 20. Not even a hundred. Not even a hundred of those people could have made a quarter. So uh, what's 25 of, uh, of 500? 125, right? 25 percent of the people couldn't make it. Give me a fucking break, bro. Town. It's a bunch of fucking posers. Is what it is. Go to the Tish. That's what I see. I was like, new face, new face, new face. I can tell this motherfucker don't listen to metal over here. No way does he. This chick over here, she's just with her fucking boyfriend. This girl, I'm pretty sure, is fucking 12 and just trying to look cool. This fucking cupcake, I don't know what the fuck he's doing here. It's what it is. It's what the fuck it is. How the fuck to be on that rant? <laughs> we'll finish this goddamn page. Man, goddamn, you're just babbling here. Bye, bye. Where's the questions? Your favorite death metal band or hell, even your Euro bands. Uh, goddamn, there might be some, some drama, so... Maybe a good question topic. I'm pretty sure I answered it. Uh, if you give me a shout out, shout out SDH, please. SDH Drew, please. That's what he says. So SDH, what is it? Sexual dick humiliation or what is it? Uh, small dick humiliation. That's his band. Check it out. How's it sound, J-Doc? Don't know. I didn't fucking listen to it. I, didn't, I mean, you saw all this goddamn shit. Didn't, didn't see it until here. Um, and he did have a metal archive, so I am doubt it's going to just pop right up on YouTube. But uh, God damn it, who's calling this motherfucker? Better be someone who contacts. It's fucking easy. Busy, goddammit. Yeah, there's a shout out. I'm waiting on the that caustic phlegm seven inch. Oh yeah, that's a banger. Real death metal that happened. Ooh, that the fucking tish work will not be buying. Great recommendation, Barbara, and the impiety seven inch. Yeah, the impiety that I, my stupid ass apparently thought it was fucking the Singapore one. Uh, Chase got a good laugh out of that. I was like, well, dude, nobody said anything. We only have the cassettes. Um, waiting for the goddamn seven inch to fully fucking spin it myself. And what the fuck? Why, why would you start? I'm starting a new band called Incantation. I just assumed. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the full goddamn disclosure on that. But, yeah. Uh, seven inches on both those. Uh, canoe free, of course. And uh, only real underground death metalists will be buying them because it's a seven inch format and underground fucking death metal that fucking posers don't know or like. Comes to a church, you know the fucking do. But the goddamn basket has to in the morning. Later, goddamn it. 